Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, welcome back to Wild Reads and welcome to another edition of six brand new books to look out for in the coming month. So on this video, we're gonna be focused on, these are all gonna be literary fiction hardbacks for coming out in the month of October and there are, as usual, some stunning, absolutely stunning titles. And let's start this little collection of books with probably the biggest release of the month. Anticipation was always going to be huge for Sarah Perry after her best-selling book, The Essex Serpent, which was fantastic. So the new book is called Melmoth. It's out on the 2nd of October from Profile Books. And here is the blurb. 20 years ago, Helen Franklin did something she cannot forgive herself for, and she has spent every day since barricading herself against its memory but her sheltered life is about to change. A strange manuscript has come into her possession. It is filled with testimonies from the darkest chapters of human history, which all recalled sightings of a tall, silent woman in black, with unblinking eyes and bleeding feet. Melmoth, the loneliest being in the world, condemned to walk the earth forever. She tries to beguile the guilty and lure them away for a lifetime wandering alongside her. Everyone that Melmoth seeks out must make a choice to live with what they've done or be led into the darkness. Helen can't, can't stop reading or shake the feeling that someone is watching her. As her past finally catches up with her, she too must choose which path to take. Exquisitely written and gripping until the very last page, this is a masterpiece of moral complexity, asking us profound questions about mercy, redemption, and how to make the best of our conflicted world. That sounds absolutely fantastic. That's Melmoth from Sarah Perry, out from Profile Books on the 2nd of October. Next up, from Little Brown, coming out on the 4th of October, this is Angela Chadwick's book, XX. When Rosie and Jules discover a groundbreaking clinical trial that enables two women to have a female baby, they jump at the chance to make history. Fear-mongering politicians and right-wing movements are quick to latch on to the controversies surrounding ovum-to-ovum -ovum technology and stoke the fears of the public. What will happen to the number of little boys born? Is there a sinister conspiracy to eradicate men at play? In this toxic political climate, Jules and Rosie try to hide their baby from scrutiny. But when the news of Rosie's pregnancy is leaked to the media, their relationship is put under a microscope and they're forced to question the loyalty of those closest to them and battle against a tirade of hate that threatens to split them apart. This kind of blurb fascinates me, uh, and it, it looks a really, really, really good book. So that's XX from Angela Chadwick. Uh, this is published by Little Brown and is out on the 4th of October. Next up, we have a book called Enigma Variations. This is written by Andre Assiman, and it is published by Faber and Faber and out on the 4th of October. And of course, Andre Asiman's profile was hugely boosted uh, a, f a couple of years ago because this is the guy that wrote the screenplay for the film Call Me By Your Name. From a youthful infatuation with a cabinet maker in a small Italian fishing village to a passionate yet sporadic affair with a woman in New York to an obsession with a man he meets at tennis court, Enigma Variations charts one man's path through the great loves of his life. Paul's intense desires, losses and longings draw him closer, not to a defined orientation, but to an understanding that heartache, like love, like low-grade fevers, like the longing to reach out and touch a hand across a table, is easy enough to live down. Andre Assiman casts a shimmering light over each facet of desire to probe how we ache, want and waver and ultimately how we sometimes falter and let go of the very ones we want the most. We may not know what we want, we may remain enigmas to ourselves and to others, but sooner or later we discover who we've always known we were. Again, that sounds absolutely fantastic. That's Enigma Variations by Andre Assiman, Faber and Faber, and it comes out on October the 4th. Okay, the next one is another huge author who's had huge hits in the past from the author of The Book Thief. This is the new one, Bridge of Clay, by Marcus Zusak, and it's described as an epic literary novel about five brothers. A captivating book with a mighty, fearless heart, Bridge of Clay is filled with characters to believe in and care about. 
Five Dunbar brothers are living, fighting, loving, grieving in the perfect chaos of a house without grown-ups. Today, the father who left them has just walked right back in. He has a surprising request. Who will build a bridge with him? Is it Clay, a boy tormented by a long buried secret, who accepts? But why is Clay so broken? And why must he fulfil this ex extraordinary challenge? Bridge of Clay is about a boy caught in a current, a boy intent on destroying everything he has in order to become everything he needs to be. Ahead of him lies the bridge, the vision that will save both him, his family and himself. That sounds really, really good as well. That's Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak and he's published by Doubleday. Okay, next up we've got a book from another hugely, hugely popular author. This is the new book from Barbara Kingsolver. It's called Unsheltered. It is published by Faber and Faber and it's out on October the 18th. The first novel from the Orange Prize winning novelist since 2012 is set in Vineland, New Jersey. In 2016, Willa Knox is grappling with a falling down house, severe lack of funds and two grown up children who have returned home and her son, the sole parent of a newborn. Interwoven with her story is that of Thatcher Greenwood, Vineland resident in 1871, a science teacher. His devotion to the work of Charles Darwin makes him a pariah in the town. Through the challenges facing both characters, Kingsolver explores what it is to stand firm when everything around you is falling apart. Again, fabulous cover for this one. I love covers like this. Barbara Kingsolver, Unsheltered, published by Faber and Faber and out on October the 18th. The last book I have for you is here. I'm gonna have a go at pronouncing this name. This is a collection of short stories. This again looks absolutely fabulous. This is called Friday Black and is written by Nana Kwame Adeje Brenya. It's published by River Run. It's out on October the 23rd. Debut collection of short stories that tackle instances of racism and cultural unrest in contemporary America. Friday Black tackles instances of racism and cultural unrest and explores the many ways we fight for humanity in an unforgiving world. In the first unforgettable story of this collection, The Finkelstein Five, Adeje Brenya gives us an unstinting reckoning of the brutal prejudice of the US justice system. In Zimmerland, we see a far too easy to believe imagining of racism as sport and Friday Black and How to Sell a Jacket as Told by Ice King shows the horrors of consumerism and the toll it takes on all of us. Friday Black will appeal to people who love Coles and Whitehead's Underground Railway, the TV show Black Mirror and the work of George Saunders and anyone looking for stories that speak to the world we live now. It looks absolutely great. That is Friday Black, written by Nana Kwame Adeje Brenya published by River Run and out on October the 23rd. Okay, I have, in the best Apple tradition, I have just got one more thing. And this one more thing is, this is published on October the 30th, my birthday, and I will be getting this, I'll be buying this for myself as a birthday present. This is an absolutely stunningly gorgeous new graphic novel adaptation of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. It looks absolutely beautiful. A haunting portrait of race and class, innocence and injustice, hypocrisy and heroism, tradition and transformation in the deep south of the 1930s. Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird remains as important today as it was upon its initial publication in 1960 during the turbulent years of the civil rights movement. Now this most beloved and acclaimed novel is reborn for a new age as a gorgeous graphic novel. Scout, Jem, Bo Radley, Atticus Finch and the small town of Merricum, Alabama are all captured in vivid and moving illustrations by artist Fred Fordham. And it says here, lifetime admirers and new readers alike will be touched by this special visual edition. I am definitely, definitely going to buy that. That was it. Whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your books. Thank you for watching. I will be back here on Wednesday with another booktube video. Until then, take care. Bye bye.